Some forks look like this, and others, well, they're upside down. So what's the deal with that? I'll explain in this video from the MC Garage. I've been at a dealership and seen someone pick one bike over another simply because one model had an upside down fork. Clearly, fork orientation is a big factor, but why? First up, let's talk about the difference between a conventional or a right side up fork and an upside down one. On a conventional fork, the chrome section, called the stanchion, is gonna be up top, clamped by the triple clamp. And the thicker female portion, called the slider, is gonna be at the bottom. On an upside down fork, it's the other way around. You've got the thicker female section clamped by the triple clamp, and then the stanchion is down below. So, that's a pretty straightforward distinction, but there are a lot of opinions out there as to why this is a better fork than this. People talk about differences in weight, they talk about how you can mount the brakes with one fork or the other, or they talk about stuff like how big the axle can be with one setup versus the other. But when it comes down to it, there's really just one major difference, and that is rigidity. When you clamp on the front brake or turn the bars to steer the bike, the fork is subjected to some serious bending and twisting loads. The whole fork is essentially a lever, with the braking and steering forces being applied here at the tire's contact patch, but acting on the rest of the motorcycle way up here, where the fork meets the triple clamp. Since most of the bending force is focused right here below the triple clamp, it makes sense that that part of the fork should be very strong. And the best way to increase a tube's strength is to increase its diameter. So, just take your conventional fork and flip it over. And there you go. The larger diameter female end is now in the triple clamp, and that fulcrum point is stronger and less likely to flex. Another thing that makes upside down forks more rigid than conventional forks is the fact that the female portion is typically a lot longer on an upside down fork than it is on a conventional fork. That means more support for the exposed section of the stanchion, which means it's less likely to bend. So, upside down forks are definitely stiffer, which we can all agree is a good thing because any fork flex is definitely a bad thing. But, do you think you're gonna feel the difference? Hell no. Maybe on the track, but not on the street. Even so, people want an upside down fork on their bike because traditionally, that's what top of the line performance machines have had. Plus, upside down forks just look cool. Case in point, Honda's lowly little Grom, which is a distinctly non-performance motorcycle, has an upside down fork. And come on, that bike looks awesome. Stiffness aside, is there any real performance benefit to an upside down fork? Well, generally yes, and this is a huge generalization, but upside down forks tend to have more sophisticated parts inside. They also tend to be fully adjustable, but even the non-adjustable ones are gonna have a damping cartridge that offers better damping performance than the rudimentary damper rod that you're gonna find in most conventional upright forks. That being said, it is a lot easier to work on a traditional damper rod fork. If you're looking at working on an upside down fork, it's gonna be a lot more complicated. One more practical difference that not many people consider is what happens when a fork seal fails, which does happen from time to time. On a traditional fork, you're gonna get a little bit of weepage, it might even drip down the slider here, but on an upside down fork, you run a much bigger risk of getting oil on your brake components since the seal is right there. And if that thing starts leaking, you're gonna have oil drip straight down onto your brake parts. So, there you have it. An admittedly very general discussion of the differences between a right side up fork and an upside down fork. This is a topic we covered because you guys suggested it. So, if you got something you want us to cover, leave it in the comments section below. And do not forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos. Until next time, have fun wrenching and ride safe.